I'd like to give a very warm welcome to our next speaker, Inni Gorgi. Your title of your talk is Gutegh Badr Sab, Voice, O Mind, Trend 10. And in the write-up, you also mentioned Pai Veer Singh Ji. Can you speak a little bit about the connection of Pai Veer Singh to Gutegh Badr Sab Ji? Oh, well, Pate to everyone and to you, Just Jay. Thank you for this very, very warm um, introduction. Uh, but um, the connection between Paisa Pai Veer Singh Ji and uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is uh, Paisa Pai Veer Singh's connection to me or my connection to him. And I refer, uh, refer to him as Pedaji. So he is the one who actually has taken me from crayons to perfume in my Sikhi journey. You know, someone who has helped me and made me see, glimpse, give me glimpses of the Guru. And therefore, when I was going to, when we organized this conference and it was going on Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, my first thing was, what has Pitaji written on it? Because that's my source for my understanding. I am not at the place and I'm not a researcher to go right to the Guru Granth Sahib, you know, to the Bani itself. I need someone to show me the way to say, what is it and who? And so the person who I revere, the person who I have um, said that this is my, this is the being who is walking with me in this journey um, as Professor Puran Singh is, and as another individual is, that these are the three beings that I want to um, take guidance from as I delve into the three shepherds of Paksha. So that's the Pai Veer Singh Ji connection. That is my Pilaji's connection. And I spoke, you know, when uh, in 2019, we had the conference on Guru uh, Nanak Sahib Ji, and uh, it was the same thing. It was through Pitaji that I um, did my presentation. So this was, for me, very natural. And I think they, they actually the connection shows us the same way as the Guru, because what you mentioned to me while you were mentioning it was, Aivir Singh Ji was a guide. Yeah. He was, um, uh, and whether you look at the word guide or mentor, but it's the lesson of the individual that serves as a guide for you. And that same way that we look forward to having the Guru Tegh Badr Sahib as our guide to who's going to hold us and then also bless us. So we will look forward to hearing from you uh, um, and uh, about Guru, uh, the Vars, the Shabads of Guru Tegh Badr Sahib. So, Take it from here. So, you know, I, I titled this Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Voices, O oh Mind, Transcend. And so the idea is about the mind, and we've been speaking about that throughout this conference, particularly the last two speakers have talked about, Jocelyn Kaur and Surundh Pal have talked about the mind, or what is it? So why is the mind so important? And I want to spend a little bit of time to understand why why in Barney the mind is invoked? I mean, 90% of the Shabbats in Barney are directed towards the mind. So let's understand this mind. The mind is the integral part of consciousness. It is faster than time and space. It is the highest faculty of the human being. And this mind, our mind, is enticed so easily by the gifts that it has forgotten the giver. It has forgotten the source. And this forgetfulness has led the mind astray, has led our mind astray. And therefore, we are unable to recognize its divinity, its origin, and therefore, unable to realize our true potential. So in, the, in you know, in Ananda, uh, the third Pacha says, e man meria tu sadaro harnale. Oh my mind, forever stay with me, with her, right? The divine. So what does that mean? How can the mind forever stay with that divinity? And, you know, Jocelyn Kaur also mentioned, you know, every moment you'll be thinking about, but, but the mind does need to stay with the her. It needs to be trained. You cannot do this without training. 
And when the mind is trained, when the conscious effort is made to make to train the mind to inculcate virtues, which virtues? The divine virtues, the virtues of goodness, of kindness, of compassion. And when we inculcate those, there's an awareness that enters. And that awareness brings a stillness. And when that happens, one experiences the riches of the universe, actually the ethers, everything one experiences. I mean, the Guru says, those who win their mind win the world. Man jite jagjit, right? So by winning your own mind, you win the entire world. So that this mind can be our best friend or it can be our worst adversary. And an untrained mind, like Justine Kaur mentioned, is like, you know, the analogy of the dog, the stray dog, is an untrained mind. It is in constant turmoil. But those who command their own mind, and this is, those who command their own mind know consciousness. And those who know consciousness live in awareness. And they experience the vastness, the vastness which is so beautifully revealed in Asaki Bhav. But it takes courage, it takes commitment to learn to control the mind. I mean, it's definitely work. And this was has been reinforced, for me at least, in the three Shabads of Guru Teik Bahadur Sab in, in Rag Dev Gandhari. And that's why, you know, um, I chose those three or they chose me. It's not, you never choose anything. It, com it comes to you. And um, if I may, I'd like to walk you through those three shepherds, my learnings of them, and then maybe we can, you know, discuss them. But mm -hmm. um, I've asked uh, the organizers, I've asked the, to put the, transcreations in the chat so that people have um, can look at them and I'm not, okay. you know, so that they, they can enjoy them. So if that can happen, that would be great. So in the first Shabbat is Yema Nekna Kahil Kare Kahe. The Guru, Guru Sahib describes the nature of the mind by invoking his mind. It's a beautiful poetic way of when you want to impart something of great substance, which is sensitive, and which is like, you know, listen, really listen to this. You want to, you want to soften it. So you say, oh, mind, listen. Or you say in poetry, you say, oh, my heart, will you do this? Can you look at this? Or, oh, my eyes, what are you here to see and what are you seeing? So it's a very gentle way, which Sling Kaur has also mentioned in Guru Teik Bahadur Sahib's Bani. So the Guru invokes his mind to explain to us in a gentle way, that this mind is refusing to listen to anything. I have been I have been giving it instructions, but it's not listening. It is as if this mind is has become tainted, and is intoxicated with this razzle dazzle of the world, and a different way of thinking has entered. The different way is durmat. So this is that different way of thinking has entered. So how can this, when this different way of thinking has entered, how can the mind even remember to sing the virtues of the divine or even to think about goodness because a different way has entered. And the Guru says, elaborates, deception has also entered and my mind and the mind has become devious. And the only thing it is really thinking about is it's increasing its own worth. So the guru equates the mind to a dog's tail that doesn't, that cannot straighten, that doesn't straighten, implying how can the mind listen intently to anything because it has become devious. And in the last line, the guru instructs the mind in no uncertain terms, kaho nanak, bajram nam, nit, jate kaj sare. So remember incessantly, intently, the Nam, and I've used the translation Chama Divine for, for Ram, by which life objective is realized. 
So the last line is that your life objective is realized. You know, your other, the, your previous speakers, Justine Kaur and Saranda Paar, both said there is the person, you have to have a personal connection. And when I looked at, um, when I was studying these, um, I know the Rahau is very important, and yes, it is very important. And I understand that at multiple levels, and Guru Sahib's Bani begins with the Rahau. But for me, it was really the last line of every Shabbat was like crystal clear for me. This, any core, is what you need to do. And I want to take you on that journey a bit. So I want to emphasize in the last line, it was life objective is realized. So if you want to go through for a seeker, what is it that you need to do? The life objective is realized. So in the first Shabbat, the condition of the mind is, is laid out. We can give the mind all sorts of instructions, but it's not going to change. The illusion is so intoxicating and enticing that the mind has hardened. And, and to break this pattern, to soften the mind, it's by consciously remembering the divine virtues, the qualities, budge. Now this word budge is very important because there's action here. It's not that you're going to sit there and it's going to happen. No, you got to do something about it. You got to take action. You know, we always say, Jado meher hoigi. And in a lot of Shabbats, it's grace has to be there. But in three, these three Shabbats, I truly found that this was, you got to do it. And you got to do it now. The great, don't worry about the grace. You, you just got to get with the program. And the program is, you got to remember. So we move to the second Shabbat, and here in the second Shabbat, the Guru again invokes his mind, and then he lists the relatives, your close, the familiar relationships, and the wife. And these are your relationships where you have a dealing with, you know, you're close to them. However much close you are to them, these relationships, which are so important to you, but the Guru says, remember, the minute the breath leaves your body, what's going to happen? They're going to say, get this body out of here because you're a ghost, which is so true. And then the guru invokes the heart. He says, now the heart is being asked to reflect on these temporary relationships. So look, there's a shift. And the guru says, the heart says that these temporary relationships are like a mirage which the, which the deer sees in the desert. It's running to get that water, that illusionary water. The minute it gets there, it's gone. It runs somewhere else to get it, and then somewhere else. And ultimately, it's exhausted. And that is our mind. We think this job will get us that, this car will get us that, this promotion will get us that. And we are constantly running, but it isn't that. So in this Shabbat, what the Guru is using the, is at least from my understanding, is the family and close relationships are being symbolized as mirages. These entangle us and they bring us pain. And I will address the question of attachment. This is not that. This is a different kind. It's because you're attached to them, you're bound to them. And the only way to rise is by freeing ourselves. It is not to say that you don't love, but it's to be attached to that love, considering it, this is mine, which the Guru speaks about in the third Shabbat. So I don't want to, you know, go ahead. And I want the Shabbat to sink in what the Guru is really saying. And the only way to free ourselves is by remembering. And in the last line, the Guru instructs the mind, is that remember the Naam, incessantly remember the Naam, for that will bring freedom. Jate hot udhar. So in the first Shabbat, the last line was, the life objective is realized. In the second one, it is, this will bring freedom. So let's, you know, build on that to see where this is going. And in this third Shabbat, the Guru addresses us, us the people, you and I. And the Guru articulates that he has seen 
that this love in this world is deceptive. Jagat mein dek juti dekhi preet. I've seen that. And, you know, we can think about it. The question arises, what love is the Guru referring to? And if we look at the earlier two Shabads and in this one, it is the love that is emanating from these closest relationships. Because everyone in these close relationships is really after their own comfort. Because you're here, I want to have this relationship with you because you're providing me something. You're making my life comfortable. You're giving me something. That's that attachment that Guru is talking about. If I could love you just because I love you, if I could love you just that, it would not be. But without that expectation that you're going to provide me with something, that is the love which Guru is talking about. That's why the, everyone's consciousness is constantly bound in that mind. What can I get from him? That's that bondage that is creating. And then, and the Guru says in the last breath, none of these are going to be with you. But look at this, the Guru is saying, is telling us, this is the astonishing norm, societal norm of society, of, of the way this life is. And yet, the mind, the ignorant mind doesn't understand this. What if we, if the trained mind could understand this? So in the last line of the Shabbat, the Guru declares the one who sings the divine songs, the song, Will free will freeze oneself, which means they're no longer bound to this attachment. No longer are they beholden, and they cross the world ocean. So in the first Shabbat, the last line was, life objective is realized. In the second, we went from, it comes freedom. And the third one was, we cross the world ocean. So the direction is so clear which Guru is giving us. We need to sing, we need to remember because it's a conscious and a physical action. When we sing, when we remember, we understand and we try to imbibe those divine virtues. And when this deliberate action becomes a part of our being, it weakens this intoxication and gradually one's journey can begin. So in a nutshell, this Shabbat, I mean, I'm going on and on because I'm so excited about, you know, it's so clear. I mean, the, it's like the path is so clear that the, why the mind refuses to listen. And there's also the revelation, how can the mind transcend and recognize its life's objective? And the guru gives a reason for the separation is the separation is there because the mind is intoxicated and it's with this all this illusion and therefore every action that is being performed is being performed from this deception and the way to transcend is through singing through this willful conscious remembrance and singing you know at first the singing is external and it is forced and then eventually it moves within it becomes internal and it begins to resound on its own. And that is the mind transcending effortlessly into that next realm where things happen effortlessly and you move into different stages of your life journey. So, so that, well, was the, the, that was the, the three Shabbats. No, so well said and with such passion wow. um, and with such love. One of the things you, while you were speaking, you mentioned was about falsehoods. And the Guru also speaks about false love. What to you is not false love in the world? Mm. So, you know, when we put false love, I mean, so, juti dekhi preet. I've seen that the preet in this world is false. So, because love is cannot be false so in that case but I've seen that there's the so-called idea of love so this love which is false is in bondage which is there's a transaction in it there is where score is being kept so in a relationship when you are able to see the divinity in each other and when all your interactions flow from that place 
that is when that love that is love i want to categorically say that is love when you see the divinity in each other when your actions towards each other flow from that place and that happens that transpires when devotion enters your relationship when that devotional element enters you consider that relationship that being to be sacred and there's a sacredness and this sacredness when this sacredness enters all boundaries you transcend all societal each and every boundary you transcend because what you are experiencing is of a far greater nature and you recognize fully well there's a recognition that this experience would not have been possible without the other being because that's sangat right in that sad sangat in that eternal sangat you experience something far greater that you as an individual on your own could not do that and that to me is eternal love because it's based on that that love of continuous and it is rooted in in something higher than just the physical it is in the mind it is when you can say in your relationship that saying i love you or i adore you feel small there's something far greater i do not have words to describe this relationship and even then when there is nothing that you want or nothing that you desire there is still that desire i only want to be there in your presence to breathe the air that you are breathing i want to be at your feet just to serve you when that enters that relationship the individuals know that something very uh i don't want rare is happening it's not impossible it's rare and therefore the two or the three or whatever it is they do anything and everything possible to honor that relationship it's beyond beyond right beyond wrong their lives are filled and that's where you meet you know we can talk about this that it doesn't happen and i can you know i can share something you know with my relationship with my mother she was she was my mother and she will be always be my mother but at the end our relationship transcended while she was my mother she was also my spiritual companion and when she left this earthly realm yes there was pain but in that pain there was there was an immense gratitude and if i can say there was a rejoicing because my mother's deepest wish was fulfilled the way she left and and i as her satsangi rejoiced that for her i as a child was sad but i as her satsangi said i also want that like the way my mother left this earth and like the way guru fulfilled her wish may guru that do that for me so the relationship when we talk about transcendence when we talk about what guru is revealing to us about attachment it cannot be it can definitely be because i've had glimpses of it one of the things that you you brought on is remembrance ah oh, simran because and your feelings have shown through that remembrance is our path to love with the guru and um uh, obviously the irony in this discussion for me lesson is how it all weaves through the last two uh, uh, panel members mentioned forgetfulness as they're away away from the guru you tie that together it's very easy forget forgetfulness 
takes us away and leads us astray. Remembrance leads us to the path of the Guru. The other, during that path of remembrance, one of the other words you mentioned was gratitude. Mm -hmm. If you could speak a little bit, Inikoji, about gratitude uh, for both um, the Guru and the Bani, especially in these three Shabbats, that would be great. So, you know, we talk about, about remembrance, like why remember? Because I get this question asked a lot, um, you know, when I'm out with, particularly, I remember this question was asked of me when I was speaking at the Pai Veer Singh Southern. One of the uh, young men asked me, you know, um, do you think Guru is very greedy? And I'm saying, okay, help me through this. I'm saying, no, I don't think so. I said, but I would love to know why you are thinking that because, you know, no question is, is a silly question. It is obviously there's something on this young man's mind. And he said, well, the Guru is always asking us to praise Guru. And, we, and that's, we've been talking about praise throughout this entire, sing the virtue, sing that. And I said, it isn't about that. It is, yes, it is so that we can remember our divine qualities, is to really simran, is to feel that presence so that it prevents us. It is that shawl. It is our protection. So we don't go towards something which is unkind. Because when we feel the presence, when we and that's when we encounter the source that is when we encounter the beautiful and remembrance and simran really is the glorification of life this is where you can appreciate the physical attributes and the beauty of life and if i may say so when be so bold you can also experience the metaphysical and from simran through simran with simran a universal being emerges, a being that accepts pain and pleasure, praise and criticism, family and adversary, wealth and the absence of wealth in the same manner. The only distinction for this being, for this transcendent being, is between the transient and the eternal. And Guru Tegh, Sahib, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib's compositions, all, all of them, really strengthen the individual so that they can experience their full human potential while living in this world. And this is transcendence. This is liberation and the ultimate freedom. And you talk about shukar, shukrana. It comes from that. It's when you are filled that's the thing that comes out because that is nothing else but sugar. I cannot even begin to tell you. I mean, just you, you, you spoke so movingly in the beginning when you introduced her in the thing that, you know, his inspiration or Guru Meher, you know, your journey. And I can relate to that because that's been my journey too. I categorically say I was a dry twig by the wayside. Nobody cared. Nobody even bothered to look. And this twig thought also knew was totally unworthy. And somehow, I have no idea how. Grace. And this grace was with, is continuing, but the grace was with this one line. Mantu Jotsarupe Apna Mool Pechan. And it was like, am I being told that I have a spark of divine light? That I am worthy? And that was the turning point. So, how can someone who has given you life, and you talk about gratitude to Guru and Bani, and someone who has given you that life, that sense of being, that you are worthy? How the gratitude just flows. There's nothing, nobody can do that for you. And this, and when you talk about, you know, I mean, Bani for me is very real. It's it's not abstract. It is honestly when it's like tip tip verse amratara. It is that stream of nectar which is constantly flowing, 
drip by drip and enriching you. And it is that beauty. I mean, and the Guru says, these are the, you know, in the Guru Granth Sahib, I mean, these are the revelations of the 35, 37 contributors. These are their experiences. And I'm saying, Guru, honestly, you got me because I want to experience those. So I'm really with you right now. What a, um, a great, um, real, like a, a true expression of remembrance, of Simran, of gratitude, and how that came into your life. I think for all of us who are on this uh, discussion today and for all of us who are hearing it, I think that's what we're all looking for. And you provided us, all the speakers today so far have provided us a pathway to be on the remembrance and gratitude side and away from the forgetfulness side. And I think that's just as you saw Pai Veer Singh as a guide, all of us look at these kind of lessons that we'll take away from today as guides for our future. So thank you for sharing that uh, because it came from really your soul. Um, and and that, I, that is the other aspect that comes to mind uh, today. And that is, we've spoken a lot about the physical at, attributes and challenges of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib. We've spoken a lot about the emotional uh, challenges that he faced family, community, as well as um, the larger level. And now also about the soul at the spiritual level. And in, in, in Punjabi, we were Rohaniyat. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're all seeking, a spiritual connection to Guru Sahib, to Akal Puruk. And that's what you've just shown us, how that can be achieved. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else, Inigoji, you'd like to share with the audience today uh, about remembrance, about Simran, or about your own search for those? You know, we, in your earlier discussion with Jocelyn Kaur and uh, Surinder Pal, there was a mention, mention that you spoke a lot about Virag. And we also say the Bani of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib is Virag. And, you know, but Bani general is, is mostly that the theme of Virag is very much there. But before Virag, there is another stage. Virag is an intense longing. One cannot get to Virag if one doesn't have Berha. Berha is separation. It is when you feel that there is a sense of separation, that you there is something missing in your life. It is then you begin this quest that what is it that I am missing? That it is. So, you know, to talk about Virag without the Berha, we cannot make that connection. And when that longing is so intense, when that Berha, that sense of separation is so intense, that will lead you to the longing because that separation and that long, separation and longing, there will be uh, something that will guide you to take the next path. Your everything will be, your focus is only on getting that. What is it that I am missing? And for me, if I may, because you have invoked, it was, if life was just eating, drinking and procreating, this life was not worth living. There had to be something more. And what was that more? What was it that I am seeking? What was it that I'm missing? And that began that journey of looking, searching, and I would say, walked down many paths, but the head fell here. The head fell here. That's so interesting because you brought us back to where we started, forgetfulness. And that separation caused by forgetfulness is actually the root of our beginning to coming for the Guru. Bye Guruji Ka Khalsa. Bye Guruji Ka Khalsa.